Hello, friends. It's Mr. Jim, and welcome back to Kids Short Stories. Today's story comes to us from Hazel and Spencer. Hey, guys, they sent me an awesome idea for a story, and you can too. Just head over to kidsshortstories.com, send me your idea, and maybe we'll turn it into an awesome adventure. And today, I want you guys to go get some paper and some something to color with if you're able to, and I would love to see your drawing. So just tag the Kids Short Stories Instagram with your picture. Are you guys ready for today's adventure? Me too. Let's go. Hazel and Spencer were both getting ready to go to the beach. They loved going to the beach. Do you like going to the beach? <gasps> Me too. We are actually going to the beach this weekend, my family. We are so excited. There's so many cool things to do at the beach. Like dig dig giant holes and build castles. And we like to build a city and build the roads and build houses. And uh, there's usually a giant hole. I don't know why the hole is in that city, but there's always got to be a hole, right? <laughs> well, Hazel and Spencer... They love going to the beach, and they love bringing all their beach toys. And what do you need at a beach? Hmm. Should probably bring, like, some towels or, like, a beach blanket to lay on. Uh, definitely some beach toys, like shovels and rakes and buckets and maybe a net to try and catch some minnows. Yeah, those are all really great things to bring to the beach. And they had gotten all of them. Spencer, did you grab uh, the, all the buckets? I have some shovels. Yep, I got it right here, said Spencer. Hazel ran upstairs to get some towels, and they needed their beach wagon so that they didn't have to carry it all in their hands. Yeah, a beach wagon is another good thing to have at the beach. So they put it all in the wagon, and off they walked to the beach. They didn't live that far from the beach, which is super cool. I wish that I could walk to a beach, but they were on their way. Oh, it's such a beautiful day, said Hazel. as She looked at her sister. They were both very excited to get to work. All right, so here's the plan. We're going to build the city, and then um, could you build the houses? I'll build the roads. And then we'll need, you know, a hospital and a vet clinic and all the important things of the city, right? Said Hazel. Absolutely. Um, and who's going to dig the hole? Said Spencer. Well, how about we both dig the hole? And the hole can go all the way around the city and we can fill it with water and it'll be perfect. Hazel and Spencer were so excited They finally got to the beach and laid out their towels and their beach blanket and got to work. They had a lot of work to do to build this ginormous city. Hey, Hazel, I'm going to go run over and grab some of those sticks that had washed up on shore. I think that'll be a good addition to our city. Spencer ran over and picked out some really beautiful driftwood. and Ooh, there's some cool shells. That'll be great. Maybe that could be the roof for the houses. Spencer filled her pockets and even a bucket with some shells and grabbed onto a piece of driftwood and carried it in her left hand, dragging it behind her. As she got back, she looked up at Hazel and said, Hey, Hazel, where'd all the buckets go? I don't see them anywhere. Hazel looked around. She was distracted because she was building some of the the buildings on the other side. I don't know. Did a wave come up and look? They looked all around and it was weird. All the buckets had just vanished. What? How are we going to build this? Wait, we got to find it. Hazel and Spencer both ran up and down the shore, but there were no buckets. It's not like a big wave came and picked them up and washed them away because they would have found them. But it was all gone. By the time they get by, got back, Hazel realized, oh, and now our shovels are gone. Everything had vanished. All the beach toys that they had brought. Wait a second. 
There's got to be a thief on this beach. He didn't just vanish or wash away in a wave. Someone must have stolen them. Maybe it's the seagulls. There were a lot of seagulls flying around, but I don't think they're strong enough to pick up a bucket. Hmm. Spencer looked down shore and there was a whole bunch of little crabs. You don't think the crabs would have done that, do you? No, but wait a second, said Hazel. She looked down in the sand by where their stuff had been, and there were footprints. Footprints that definitely should not be there. They were not people footprints. They were some kind of animal. Look at this, Spencer. They both jumped on their hands and knees and carefully inspected each footprint. Look at that. It almost looks like a ginormous cat. Like I can see the pads of the feet and that is so weird. Why would a giant, like look at the, it's as big as, it's bigger than my hand. Whoa. The two girls did not know what to think or do. They looked around and those footprints went right to the ocean. That is so weird, said Hazel. Oh, wait. Oh my goodness, look at that. On the shore, they could see a shark fin swimming back and forth in the water. Ooh, I'm glad we're not swimming today, because that would have been dangerous. But look at that. It was a shark that they'd never seen before. It, it had spots like a cheetah. And wait a second, that thing has legs. Holy smokes, said Spencer. It's like half shark, half cheetah. You don't think that's the thing that stole all our toys, do you? Well, said Hazel. She thought very carefully. "Uh, I think it might actually be because those footprints look like they match that creature. And that's the only thing that could have come up here. Let's go see if we can ask him. Hazel and Spencer walked down to the edge of the water, not to get in the water because it's not safe to go in the water where a shark is. But they called out to the shark. Hello, uh, shark cheetah. What are you, are you out there? Spencer was the brave one to shout it out. And then the shark cheetah picked his head out of the water. Yeah, what do you want? Well, Um, did you happen to see the buckets and shovels that we were playing with? No, um, I I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, okay, said Hazel, but we saw your footprints right by where our stuff was and now it's missing. Okay, yes, I was up there and, okay, fine, you can have your stuff back. Just leave me alone. Wait. Wait. What's going on? What's wrong? Well, you see, no one ever wants to play with me, and so when I saw you having all that fun, I just couldn't stand it. So I had to figure out a way to end all that fun. Oh my goodness, that's so sad that no one wants to play with you. Well, you can come play with us, said Spencer. Really? I've never had a friend before. And that is the day that the shark cheetah became friends with Hazel and Spencer. It's kind of interesting how that works, right? If someone doesn't have a lot of friends, sometimes it makes them sad or mad when they see other people having fun. And they want to ruin that fun because they're like, if I can't have fun, then no one can. Well, just like that shark cheetah, Hazel and Spencer were really nice and made an easy, really quick friend. And then that shark cheetah brought back all the toys and the three of them played together. Wow, and I'm sure that their sand city was even more awesome having a shark cheetah on your team. Well, great job, Hazel and Spencer. You made a new friend, and I hope that I do too at the beach this weekend. Well, I will see you next time, friends. Bye!
Great job. You listened all the way to the end. And you know what time it is. It's time for good shout outs. I want to say hey to Theodore and Stella from Massachusetts, Oliver from Thunder Bay, Ontario, Michael and Otto from Orient, New York, Taylor from Arizona, Oralia from Montreal, Canada, and Oliver and Jonathan from Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm so glad that you're all in the Kid Short Stories family and on our spy team. We could not stop Dr. Stinky Breath without you, my friends. Well, you have a super duper day, and I will see you on our next adventure. Bye!